Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you how and why you should use inheritance in your game. And this isn't a Unity specific, it's uh, coding specific with or object oriented programming. So uh, you knowing this now will help you in other languages and it's just a key concept you should uh, learn about and it saves you a lot of hassle and it also just is for good coding practice and you'll, you'll see why you should use it in a second if you've not used it before. Um, one thing I want to start off by saying is thanks to... Uh, Let's see, Shaggy Rogers. Um, I forgot, I actually put up a Patreon a while back and uh, I kind of forgot about it and, you know, left it. I knew the channel wasn't really big enough to bring in anyone yet. Um, but now I've got my first Patreon, so thanks if you're watching this video. Uh, and to anyone else who would like to support, then, you know, hit the links in the description. It'd mean a lot. You can read the benefits there. Um, but anyway, let's get into the video. So, as always, in uh, Unity at least, I'm going to speak to a Unity standpoint because uh, quite a lot of people that use Unity haven't coded elsewhere before, you know, they might just know C-sharp in Unity. So they still might be learning basic coding concepts. So this is relevant for every other language, basically, or at least every language with classes. So how it works is, here's our code. These are libraries we import. Um, grayed out ones just means we've not used them yet, so you can actually get rid of them if you don't use them. Obviously, Unity Engine is for just Unity-specific stuff. And then here's the main structure of the thing. Now. Obviously, as you know, public, accessible from elsewhere. Class, it's a class. And, uh, this is the name of the class, and it's type, or uh, it derives from, mono behavior. Now, what, what does derive mean? Well, basically, when you write a class, if it wasn't deriving from anything, if we had down here, public class test, boom. If we had that, it's perfectly fine. And that just means it's a class, right? Now, a class is almost like a data type. You know, you're in your function, uh, you're in your class, sorry, and you have a public integer x equals 10, right? So this is a data type integer, and it's inside a class. So if you were ref referencing a class, so you said like um, example base class um, equals new example base class, then if I then said, uh, you know, uh, debug.log, um, ex dot x whoops um okay the reason this isn't working is it's not inside a function so we'd have to write um i don't know private void um something and it would do all of this um so this is the code that does and we can say x dot well x is the variable so oh, what's it saying um capital L. anyway um so what this is basically saying is this um, class has this function and it's referring to this data type from this class. And so all, all throughout making a game and just making code of multiple files anyway, you're referring to variables that are all over the place um, by referencing certain things. Uh, and this is a class that doesn't derive from anything, meaning anything you write in here is fresh. Um, obviously, this is reused from here, but obviously that's just referencing the class. If I didn't have this, obviously this class is empty, has nothing to it. We could have some uh, values on it. So let's say it was a public class item, which I can't use because I've already really used it in this project uh, the, that I'm using. You don't need to have any of this. It's just a standalone video. So um, basically, this derives from mono behavior, which is a Unity thing, right? Mono behavior uh, lets you have methods like void start, void update, on enable, disabled, whatever. And it also lets you do other Unity related things. But let's say we made a class in our game, okay? So we've got a class in our game, example base class. That stores, uh, you know, um, maybe public int x uh, equals 10. And you might have a um, private, or you might have a like a serialized field, uh, private string um, message equals hello. You might have loads of random data types, right? Um, you know, private bool. Um, is done equals false. You'll have all your different data types. Um, now, let's say you had a base class. Well, what base class really is and the reason you use them. Let's say you have item, right? Item is a base class, but you might have different kinds of items that have different functionality. Now, you don't want to have to copy and paste and write all out the item code all over again. If you've got any code that's reusable, you should reuse it. You shouldn't copy and paste it. A good example of this is if you've got some codes, so you've got, you know, your void um, start and you know you void um, update like that if you've got these and let's say in your update um, you have something silly like um, you know or let, let's say every frame I want to print hello three times you know you, you wouldn't do print hello 
and you wouldn't then just um, you know duplicate that because first of all well okay in this case you probably would because it's so simple but let's say you want to do something complicated like print hello um, x plus plus right um, you know x plus plus uh, x ah, I can't type x plus plus and so on um, maybe you want to actually you know debug like x or something so first of all, this just seems silly, right? And then maybe you would also want to do something else, like say um, is done is equal to the opposite of is done. And let's say you did that every time as well. Well, let's just say you had code which did that. Now it's ridiculous. You wouldn't you wouldn't do that because let's say you oh, oh I need to do it again, you know? It's stupid. You wouldn't do that. What's the point? The whole point in um, making good clean code that's um well best practice is anywhere where something is repeated and it's you know the same like completely the same you put it in a function and call the function so that one line all these lines can turn into one line and then you'll have so like for example one way to do that in unity is uh well in just visual studio anyway you can drag over the bit you want to make into a function right click extract method or right click on um sorry quick actions and refactoring so you can actually just do control by the looks of it i don't really know all shortcuts so if you select it all and do control, no, you just have to click on it, um, extract method. And what it does is it turns into a function and asks you to type in a name. So I put like, you know, test function, press apply. Now, if I just delete all this code, you'll see that below every frame now. Like, so it's doing the exact same job, but in less lines. Okay. Cause it's just going to do this code every time we call that. Uh, and if we want it to happen three times in a frame, then you just, you know, call that rather than having that that many times. And even then you would put it in a loop if you wanted it to do a certain amount of times, or you might even, um, I don't know, there's different ways of doing it, you know, but the whole point is anywhere in code where you can reuse it, reuse it. Don't, don't copy and paste it again. And it's the same with this. So for example, um, you know, we have this int x, and let's say we had a, another class that has an integer x and a message hello and there's done false. Let's say you had all those types. Well, what you would do is you would go go into here and you would create a new C sharp script called. Um, let me just. Okay. Oh, what's going on here? Um, okay. You would do like inherited class. Now. What inheriting means, if you, well, obviously, so it's a normal word. Anyway, inherit means you get something from something above. So if you're inheriting something from your parents, it means, you know, your parents pass it down. So if you're inheriting from a class, you get all the stuff that class has. So for example, if I change this from mono behavior to example base class on this new script, everything in here is now in here as well. You just don't see it because it's, there's, you know, then it'd be the same as copy and pasting it again. So for example, if I had a uh, public void um well if i just had a void start sorry um first of all we might get an underlining because um the base class also has a void start but because it's just void start we can use it okay um if it was a public void start it might give us something um yeah so it's basically saying yep it already exists on this thing so it's going to say hide it now obviously you don't want to do that it's not the best way to do it what it basically means is all the code on here works without me putting it in here. I, I could have a start method without, like the best way to show this would be in the start debug.log message. Okay. So this code here, the example base class does that. This doesn't do anything in here. This inherited base class doesn't have any code, but if I have an object in the scene, so just an empty object in the scene, uh, wait, where's the inspector gone? Why is it down here? Um, so if I have this and I just uh, center it, whatever. If I put code onto it and I put the inherited class, keep in mind, this inherited class doesn't actually have any code in it. It just inherits. So when I start, you'll notice it does hello, which takes you to the example base class, which is actually where it's called. But keep in mind, the only code which is on it uh, is the inherited base class. So we get all that code anyway. Now that's really useful for obviously not having to copy and paste stuff because this might do the same, might have the same functionality. But then maybe you want to change something. So let's say uh, you have another function like public, oh, like, uh, I don't know, private void do something. And this function says, you know, yeah, is done um, is equal to the opposite of is done. So equals the noise done. Let's say that's what it does, right? And you can deal with that. Then 
Uh, and you might also have, you know, void. Um, update which uh, debug dot log uh, do something. Uh, not debug log, it should just do something. And then we could um, actually debug it afterwards. So debug dot log is done. So this is all functionality you've made for this script. And the thing is, um, we might want to have some of that, but not all of it in our base class. Our base class might want to do something slightly differently. Sorry, our inherited class might want to do something slightly differently. So let's say, yeah, we want in the start to uh, debug that and in the update we want to do that. But let's say we want to do something to be a different function. Let's say, yeah, we're going to call it every frame. We just want it to work slightly differently. So what we can actually do is instead of private void do something, we can have um, public, uh, sorry, override void. And what that basically means is it's a public function. Um, oh no, sorry, this is the uh, base class. So we don't put override, we put virtual. And what that basically means is in the, any child's, any children of this um, class can use this function and change it for themselves. So if we go in here now, we can put public override void and it actually says do something is the function. Now, when you auto complete it, it puts in base dot do something. Now base, as you can see, refers to the base class. Um, do something is the function it calls. So it, it would just do, you know, just do that, it would do that code. But let's say we didn't want it to do that. Get rid of that. Um, now, let's say we want it to do something else with is done. Now notice how is done is private. So if I try and do something with is done, so is done. Oh, it doesn't exist, you know, is done equals false. Well, I can't do that. But why? Because it's inherited and it's a value. Thing is, because it's private, we can't access it. So how do we access it? Well, there's actually um, a different accessor. So this is called the accessor. So public, you know, can be accessed from anywhere, whatever, whatever. Private means it can only be accessed from this script. So if you want to change it elsewhere, you would either make it public or you'd write a function, a getter or a setter. Now, um, another best practice thing is you should always use the most like secure um, accessor that you can. So only use public if you have to. Then this private is the best one to use if you can. Then there's what's called protected. Protected means it's private within that class kind of um, hierarchy. So obviously you would have classes derived from other classes and you would have that going down. So if we actually change is done to be a protected um, bool, what that means is it's in here. We can't access it from other scripts unless they derive. So is done is now, it exists, right? So we can actually change is done, even though it's protected. And because it's protected, we won't see it in the inspector. So this is all about accessing uh, variables from different places, um, being in different classes, having classes that derive from other classes, being able to override uh, functions. So like the inherited class um, will actually just do something every frame, but instead of setting it to in, uh, the opposite, it will just set it to false. So if we run this now, we expect it to just be false. It might be true for one frame. I don't know what I set the default as. No, it's just false because we set it to false and then we print it, uh, we log it. Now, obviously if I had the inherited, so the base class instead of the inherited class, then you know, it'd be different. I could obviously say, no, nah, I want this to be true actually. And then if I run it, it would just be true for everything. So most of the code from here, well, most of it basically is not in here. We just have this um, saying, now nah, do this function slightly differently. You know, we want to do everything the same except this function. So we just tweak that function. And there we go, it's true. So it's overriding it, yeah? If obviously you know what override means, it means like taking over. So we're gonna take over this function for us. Now let's say you wanted to just add some functionality rather than, you know, change it. Well, you wouldn't then go and just copy all the code through it, right? Because let's say there's loads more code here. Let's say you had multiple lines of it. Let's say you had like, you know, all this, whatever. You wouldn't want to copy that into the other thing. So what you'd do is you would just say, set it's true and then base dot do something. And that just means call the function from the base class. So it would say, is done is true, and then it would do all this without you needing to actually type that out again. Because the whole point in inheritance is reusing code without having to retype it. So you save yourself time and lines, which means it overall saves code space and just file size. And it's also neater and easier to manage. It's just better in every possible way, and you should definitely use this, um, use inheritance. And you can also inherit from, um, well, you can only inherit from one class, okay? We can't then put another class like, um, you, know, you can't do, I don't know, item. It might say you can, but you can't. You know, here you go. Yeah, you can't have multiple base classes. Though you can, um, it's not really inheriting, but you can use uh, interfaces. 
which I have covered in a different video. So if you want to see that, go back and find it. Interfaces is where you can give classes, multiple different classes, regardless of what they are, the same function that can get called. So it's almost like, um, it's like this. It's like having um, a base class without the base class. Uh, if you've watched the video, you'll understand what I'm on about. So like, for example, we could say I um, damageable. I don't know why. I, I don't know if I even did it in here. Um, destroyable, killable. I don't know, but um, you know, there's I draggable, for example. Um, well, no, there isn't because we have to import it if we wanted to use a uh, using Unity engine dot event system event systems. If we were doing that, then we could say um, I draggable um, drag handler, which basically means that this now has to have the function this, and it means that I could go to another script uh, and say, you know, this one also has uh, the draggable thing, whatever, but. If we had this um, I drag handler in the main class, if we had it in the base class, so um, I drag handler. Obviously, we have to use uh, using Unity engine dot event systems. If we were doing that, and then we had uh, I drag handler, and we had the function in here. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Um, implement interface then all we would have to do is we wouldn't need event systems we wouldn't need to inherit it um, all we need is if we wanted to change what that function actually does we would have a public override void on drag and then here uh, sorry I always do it wrong a public um, virtual void on drag and then here we have public um, override void on drag and that just means that instead of uh, doing, you know, instead of doing a debug dot log uh, here, we would say now nah, when the inherited one gets dragged, we want to say hey, we want to say, you know, debug dot log hi or something. So they keep in mind this one has the drag handler in it, and this has the uh, the event systems part of the library, yet. This one doesn't, but we can still use it. We can still refer to it because it inherits it all from here. So I hope this video was a good enough introduction to how base classes work in inheritance. Uh, obviously, I was just giving loads of example scenarios when you would use it. Uh, if you want to ask more, then feel free to ask in the, ask in the comments or join the Discord server, link in the description. Um, obviously, check out the Patreon if you uh, want to. That would mean a lot. Um, otherwise, just leaving a like and subscribe would mean the most to me. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.